In this video, I'm going to show you how to analyze data with ChatGPT. We're going to use this custom GPT called Data Analysis Pro. What you're going to do is upload a CSV or a JSON or any sort of Excel file, any sort of data file. You're going to be able to upload it here and then you can say analyze this data. Okay, and what we should get is we should get the ability to get some charts, get some insights, and start to be able to ask some questions of it. So it may or may not be able to uh, understand anything, but this is going to kind of guide us through this. So it's outlining the six dimensions that it sees inside of the data. So it's saying we uploaded a file called police arrests made. So this is just some crime data of some police arrests and the link to where I got the data I'll provide it below. And what it says is you can analyze trends, demographics, geographical analysis, category analysis, correlation, or statistical. So we could look at types of arrests or categories of offenses, uh, distribution spatially across different locations or regions, or we could look at demographic based variables or changes over time or relationships between different variables uh, or stats, right? So what I'm gonna say is let's do a little bit of category analysis. So I'm actually just gonna copy this, throw that in here. Let's see what we get next. Okay, so it's gonna go through and it's gonna be analyzing the data. And just keep in mind as we move forward, we can ask different questions. We could probably go back to any of these and say, hey, now I want you to look at it from a spatial standpoint. I want you to focus on this aspect of the data, that aspect of the data, and kind of tell me what, what is in this. What's cool is along the way, it'll even show us some of the code, some of the Python code that it's uh, executing to actually look at the data. Okay, cool. So what we have right here is the top 10 most frequent offenses. So this is going to break down all those offenses, the number of arrests for each. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, for one of these categories, we want to see maybe like a geographic analysis. So I'm going to say uh, for open container, can we analyze that from a geospatial standpoint? Of where those arrests occurred okay cool so now we're gonna see if we can get a breakdown of this data shown from a geospatial view kind of where these arrests happened and so we'll see if it can come out with that it's actually kind of important to show I just got a message that said that it can't actually uh, put this on a map because we actually just have an address and we would need to geocode this address to actually get the coordinates. So in that case, we can't actually do that. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to try a different category and ask a different question. But this is interesting because what it's doing is it's highlighting what it can't show you in the data, which is more often than not something that you will run into. You'll try to get a certain answer. And this is really smart. It's telling you, hey, you actually can't know this because we don't have that piece of data formatted properly or it's outside of the capabilities until we do A, B, or C. Okay, one question we can ask though is if we could do trend analysis to determine when the peak season for arrest is. And after that, we're actually gonna ask it a question about time because within the data, we do see time, we do have date, and we're gonna see what it could do to show us any sort of insight within the data relevant to uh, trends and kind of patterns in the uh, the date and times that these arrests are happening. Okay, cool. So we got this chart um, overall, not the best one. We could see, you know, hey, here's the trends. Um, what I'm really saying is this is fine, but can you give me a better looking chart so I can understand the most crime filled seasons okay cool so what it actually did was it highlighted a whole area that it considers the uh, peak crime season so I think that's really interesting it actually covers multiple years but it's actually showing hey these are the years with the highest peak so we could ask questions of it um, but I'm actually gonna say uh, I'm gonna ask it more of a time-based question I'm gonna say can you create me some sort of visualization that shows 
what time of day is most likely for an arrest to occur. We'll see what that outputs. What's cool too is it also breaks down how it's gonna do it and it says what column it's gonna get the different data points and so it's going from the time of arrest column, extracting the hour and then building this up. So, okay, you can see for hours in the day you actually have at night, um, really and in, into the evening you have almost no arrests going through uh, the early morning. I think that that's rather interesting. It does kind of make sense based off of what I know. Once again, if you want, you can go ahead and you can get the Python code right here. Very neat. Now I'm going to say, can you look through the data and find any interesting insights or any interesting data points and then just make me a visual that would describe something valuable in the data that I may have not been able to ask you. So I'm going to see if it is actually capable of just identifying any sort of um, interesting patterns in the data. So it's going to go do exploratory data analysis. It's going to look around the data and identify something useful. And then it, it's going to go ahead and provide a visualization on that. So it may tell us something that we're not able to know. If we don't know the right questions, we could just ask it to go look and then see what we get. Okay, cool. This made uh, three visuals based off of age, race, and gender. And so it's just showing the distributions um, based off of those. Now, the one critique I have is that it has three small charts. It doesn't actually have any breakdown of the uh, larger charts or any sort of um, distinct um, chart that we could like actually download. And so I'm going to say, could you provide me one or all of these charts and then also download links to them in case I want to uh, save these charts and use them for something. So we'll see what it says to that. Okay, perfect. So if I want to download this, I would just click this link and then I would have access to that chart as a local file. So for example, here is just a PNG of the age distribution. So you see not a lot of 70 year olds getting arrested, a lot of 20 year olds and 19 year olds. Now this is just a basic overview of how we can begin to explore and work with the data and really understand it using ChatGPT. And I hope this is helpful. Go ahead and try some of this out on your own. Go ahead and get that data or some other data set. Try to get something that has a lot of attributes in it. Basically, I'm talking about rows and columns. If you have a lot of data in there and a lot of different qualities, you can throw it in here and you can get it to be analyzed by ChatGPT and you'll probably find something interesting out about it. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please drop a like, hit the bell notification, and I'll see you in the next video.